often stop conversations to listen to that clanging bell right. and these sirens as a truck goes by. Well, um, when I was a kid, the rule was, here comes a fire truck, get out of the way and say a prayer for the fire. Don't mm -hmm. chase fires. Don't, you know, be in the way of scenes of tragedy. Try to pray for them and stay out of their way. They don't need you to worry about as well as the people that are the victims of whatever they're going to. So um, support them and um, respect them, pray for them, but then, you know, get yourself off the street. <laughs> respect. respect I've seen here. Yeah. Many firemen that I've had conversations with over the years very rarely talk about Absolutely. Very rare. So it's like a war veteran. Correct. My father was both. He didn't tell me what he saw in Europe. I overheard it as an adult when he would talk to other men. Mm -hmm. And he didn't come home from fires and talk about mm -hmm. some of the grisly scenes that he saw. He just dealt with it. And is that what gave you the curiosity to, to find more, find out more, or? Sure. I remember going to a, a murder trial where my father was a witness because of his being a fireman. Mm -hmm. And over on Renwick Street, a teenager had killed his parents wow. by burning the house down. Mm -hmm. And my father was there trying to rescue the mother and the child that she threw out the window. He was able to catch the child. The youngest brother of the boy who was ultimately convicted and I think put in a juvenile facility. He was only 16. But that made a huge impact on him. That fire haunted him, but watching the trial, you know, really made an impact on me too. Now, we we run a lot of youth programs. We deal with the kids a great deal. You you communicate with the kids all the time. Our organization and many other people within this general area. And you, you think about how those little seeds, those little moments that you have with them, changes their focus, gives them that inspiration to move forward, to to, to become whatever it is. Absolutely. Neighbors did that for me. Um, I grew up in a Newburg where you knew everybody on your street. I still live on a street where we know absolutely everybody in every house within two blocks. Um, and, you know, people watched, watched for you. Um, disciplined you when you needed it, but watched for you. And um, rooted for you when you did something right. But it also brought it to mom when you did wrong. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you knew that I, at my age, I'm 63 now, and I often say that the only sadness I have in aging, most of it is, it is good. You know, most of moving forward in life is very good. But the only thing that um, is sad for me is that I don't have people that were over my shoulder saying, good girl, mm -hmm. that they're all gone, except my mom, who's 93. But you look up the line to your elders to tell you, good girl, or good guy, you know? Uh, that's the right way to do it. I've, I've seen that before. I've done that before. So I think for me, history is important because um, I can guide people to say, this went well once before. You know, you're on the right path. Correct. Mom was always right. Yeah. Even when she was wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> history Alive. Tell me about this. What history is that? History Alive. I am really pleased that this is coming on September 19th, this okay. coming Saturday, um, in both of our oldest cemeteries in the city of Newburgh. Uh, Old Town Cemetery, founded in 1713 up on Grand Street in South, and then St. George's Cemetery, founded in 1834 over on Washington Street. Um, we are portraying people from the past. So a group of volunteer citizens who've just come together to do this um, have said it's time to invite people into these old cemeteries that tend to get run down, desecrated, kids sit on the tombstones, you know, right on the backs of them, hopefully not the fronts of them, but sometimes that too. Um, and just treat them as kind of Halloween ghoulish places, uh, you know, the, the land of the dead. It's also the land of people's stories. It's the place where um, folks who really mattered to this community are laid to rest. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, the central lesson, whenever I lobby the state or the federal government for money for some history project, the, the bottom line of all of that is always that um, people's lives matter. And so um, that's the lesson of this, too. Come into Old Town. Don't just crisscross through it on your way to the deli. 
come into St. George's. Don't just run through it because it's a place to hide out and smoke. Come inside and meet some of the people who are laid to rest there. And so volunteers are going to stand in somewhat in costume, not in theater costume, but somewhat looking like they might have in the past. And as you walk past the stones, you'll be able to say, and, you know, tell me about. Let me, let me get this straight. So and so. Let me get this straight. There are two cemeteries. Two cemeteries Saint on George. two sides of town, south side, north side. Yep, St. Okay. George on the south side. Okay, so there's two cemeteries where you're going to have, on September 19th, Yes. correct, people dressed like individuals who were buried there. Standing at their tombstones. Standing at the tombstones. Don't you think that's kind of morbid? Or? No, no. You're going to see them looking well. They're not going to have dark okay. circles under their eyes. And no zombies, zombies, huh? No zombies. Okay. No zombies. <laughs> okay. They're going to look lively and okay. healthy. And they're going to be able to say, you know, um, Levi Dodge and I had a boarding house that put up some of the first people who escaped the British in New York. Um, I am so and so. And each of them will tell you um, what about their life, their life was special, and how their particular life moments wove into the story of Newburgh. So I'm assuming that's how history alive. So the history becomes history becomes alive, alive through volunteers who will stand there and tell a moment in time. Okay. Now I I'm at the cemetery. I came up to a character. Give me the character's name again. Okay. Let's say you come up to Annie Irving. Okay. So I've walked up to Annie Irving. Is there going to be some literature about her? What if I want to learn more about her? Where would I find? There will be a program for the day. So there okay. will be a printed program available at the gate of each cemetery as it begin, as the program begins. And it's mm -hmm. morning in Old Town, okay. afternoon in St. George's, so they're not competing in any way. And uh, in between, there'll be a Victorian lunch put on by the mm -hmm. Guild of St. George's Church. So they'll put on a lunch with old-fashioned food. Wow. Um, and there'll be a historic trolley that will shuttle people back and forth across town. Um, but you will enter and um, at Old Town in the morning, we are going to open with a prayer by a member of the Lenape Indian tribe because this was their land first. And so whenever we tell our story about we've settled Newburgh mm -hmm. since 1709, well, let's not forget Newburgh was settled before 1709. Correct. They were so we, like to say, <laughs> we came ashore and we made Newburgh. Well, we made the name Newburgh, but there were um, seasonal villages of Lenape, who are the same people as Muncie and Algonquin. Mm -hmm. All of those names mean the same people. And they were here first. Mm -hmm. So we think it's proper to open the day by kind of consecrating the ground with the prayer of the people who were first people. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to uh, certainly have Mayor Valentine welcome everybody to the day. We're going to have a song by John Dobin over on Bencard Avenue, he lives. And John is a a man who's trained in 18th century music and used to perform with a consort of people who did that kind of music in New York City. And he's going to sing kind of a popular song of the 18th century that people who would have lived at the time of the characters would have been humming or singing about friendship, about the ties that bind, which is just the theme we want in people's heads as they walk around. How much is it going to cost me? Nothing. It's free. Free is always better than cheap. It's completely free. Um, we are encouraging everybody in Newburgh and everybody in the surrounding area, please come. September 19th, starting at 9.30 in Old Town Cemetery at Grand and South Street, and then uh, lunch at St. George's, after lunch.